there you go guys I've got to tell you there's nothing I love more than gear videos equipment review videos I love them anyway let's get to this one I've been putting this off for quite some time okay what I've done is I've mounted my equipment rig onto a cushion as a makeshift dummy torso uh, you can see there there is two layers short sleeve t-shirt and a long sleeve t-shirt uh, you can see the hydration hose comes over my left shoulder um, utility pouch across the chest for immediate access items uh, like a fanny pack across the front belt and I'll move around to these two extremely large utility pouches on the sides two water canteens with canteen cups aluminium canteen cups there's the second one the second extremely large utility pouch you know, I mean this is this is 10 inches tall Move around to the back. Moving around to the back, we've got the hydration bladder. That's just a poncho rolled up, stashed in the handle there. Got a double magazine pouch. Uh, absolutely perfect size for the Catadine Hiker water filter, um, which is in one of those pouches. We've got the same fanny pouch as we have around the front, um, just in black, um, around the back. These two accessory pouches are for my cordage. Uh, you can see there is a tarp on the bottom there. That is a 3 meter by 4 meter tarp, heavy duty. I've got two of these pouches, one of which contains my main torch. See that in use before long. And the same on the other side. Except this one contains an inflatable pillow. See, I've got stashed in there super glue. Right, let's start with water capability. At the back there you can see the hydration bladder. It's supposed to be three litres, but to be honest it only comfortably takes two, two and a half litres or so. Got two standard one litre plastic water canteens with aluminium cups. Uh, I've also got that little wire adapter that I've made so that I can hang either of these pots. I've got my Catadine Hiker water filter with appropriate tubing in the nylon bag that's underneath it. Some Catadine Micro Pure tablets. These are the variety that take longer to work but taste better. Uh, underneath there, you can probably see plastic bags. These are the kind of bags that you would get if you buy um, some tropical fish or goldfish or something from a pet shop. So these are watertight fish bags. And I've actually drawn on uh, lines. Um, of 4 litres, 2 litres, 1 litres and 1 pint. Um, quite handy really, I can fill it up to the 4 litre mark um, and put 4 tablets in. Um, likewise, fill it up to 2 litre mark, put 2 of the tablets in. And uh, yeah, it's a good way of storing water. Extremely strong water type bags these. Obviously if they're designed for carrying uh, animals. So I've got, I know I've got 7 there. 13, 14, I carry at least 14 of those and there's a capacity of about 5 litres comfortably in each one. Um, so what, 60, 70 litres um, of, contain, of water storage right there. Uh, I've got one of those fold away 
flexible rubber uh, water balls. And that pretty much completes the water section. The tarp you can see there is a 3 metre by 4 metre tarp um, with some paracord. I've actually got a bit more than I've got out here. A 550 paracord and normal string. Supermarket string. Extremely cheap hammock. Actually only cost one pound. Um, what I've got in here, in this supermarket pencil case, is uh, an extremely cheap airbed or a lilo as they're sometimes referred. Uh, that was four pounds I think the lilo. I think the pencil case was a pound. Uh, I've got an inflatable pillow. Uh, moving on to my lighting capability. Um, I've got two 270 lumen torches that each take a single AA battery. Um, I've got a 1000 lumen torch um, with several modes, my main flashlight really, or torch, uh, and that takes one of these uh, 18650 variety of battery. Uh, I've also got the head torch there. It's supposed to be 270 lumens, but I don't think it is to be honest. Certainly not as bright as either of these. So these were only a five quid each off eBay. The aluminium housed Cree lumen torch for five quid. Uh, this was 20 quid. Uh, but it came with a charger and two rechargeable batteries as well. I won't bother flashing it into the lens like everybody does. Uh, I have a watch variety of mobile phone uh, with four batteries. There's one in and there's three spare ones there. So enough of that. Uh, certainly got enough battery power to last me. Um, a small TV which is also a mobile phone as well. Um, should my primary mobile phone fail I can put the SIM card into the TV and use that as a phone as well. Uh, I have got Thinsulate variety of gloves. So the fleecy warm variety. Uh, polyurethane palm coated work gloves. Uh, and a spare pair of the same. So three sets of gloves there. DPM bandana. DPM is just camouflage if you don't know. It's just a disruptive pattern material. Uh, I've got two of these ponchos. Lightweight cheap £1.50 ponchos. Uh, one there. And the other one is what everything else is actually laid on at the moment. Uh, pretty simple really. Um, spare t-shirt. A uh, couple of pairs of spare socks. This I forgot to mention in the flashlight department. I've got this uh, overhanging tent light as well. It takes three triple A's. Just cheap 250 job from the supermarket. Moving on to the kitchen. I pretty much take with me some soups. As you can see at the back there, chicken soups. Some hot chocolates. I've got some powdered milk. I've got exactly enough to make up one pint of milk uh, in a plastic bag that also has a line marked on it for exactly one pint of water. So I just fill the bag up with water up to the line, close the bag off and shake it until uh, I get some rather disgusting made up milk from powdered milk. I do not like powdered milk when it's been made up in the milk. It's horrible. Um, some uh, easy do it quick bread mix. Just add water variety. Bit of bushcraft bread sometime maybe. Uh, in this tub here I've got a mix up of my coffee. Coffee and sugar and powdered milk mixed up in the correct proportions. Uh, I've got my spark, a sponge and a couple of scourers, a toothbrush there. I've got a small cosmetic jar full of fairy liquid, washing up liquid. Uh, and a small, uh, an extremely small bag um, that I've put some toothpaste in and then reinforced it with a bit of duct tape. So just some toothpaste in there really. I cut the corner off, squeeze a bit out. Right, I've got um, a small basic first aid kit here. 
They're just some simple plasters, a bandage. Um, I think I've got some burn relief gel, some super glue, and a little saline pod in there. I've got a small plastic container with cotton wool balls. No Vaseline on them though. I'll tell you why in a minute. Uh, a small container with absolutely jam-packed full of extremely dry birch bark peelings. Uh, two different types of sharpening stone. I've got a coarse one and a fine. Uh, this is actually one of those really crappy kits that you get out of the handle of one of these knives. So this is the kit that actually came inside that handle. With, I would imagine an extremely high quality fishing equipment and such forth in. <laughs> yeah, right. Um, bit of duct tape wrapped around itself, just a bit of spare duct tape, um, an extra spare super glue, uh, fire lighting capability, oh yeah, a wire saw, don't ask, not really of any use to be honest. Fire lighting capability consists of, uh, I've got some windproof matches, uh, I've got one of those hard strike wicks, um, so in, on the end of this is a wick soaked in flammable material and a steel striker as well and on the side of the container is a ferrocerium rod um, speaking of which two ferrocerium and magnesium combined rods so I, don't know, I know a lot of people call these a ferrocerium rod uh, it's not, it's a ferrocerium rod um, it was originally made uh, up of iron and, f and uh, cerium, uh, invented by an Austrian dude in the late 1800s. Um, although only 60% of them nowadays are actually made up of just iron and cerium. Um, the other 40% is uh, various things that have been added throughout time, like a little bit of magnesium here, a little bit of zinc there. Um, so modern ferrocerium rods um, will actually strike from stainless steel blade knives, contrary to some uh, to some people's belief. The myth that uh, that the fire steel won't strike off a stainless steel knife um, is exactly that a myth. Anyway, um, extra spare packet of windproof matches right there, and a spare ferrocerium there. Ferro rod, what are you going to call it? But uh, just a few different ways. I sometimes carry cigarette lighter with me as well but to be honest that only if it gets used for heating the end of cut paracord to stop it fraying. Um, I generally like to use uh, the fire steel or such different methods when I'm out in the bush. Anyway, that's the fire lighting capability. Move on to the knives. Utility knives. We've got a very small multi-tool there. Very small, cheap supermarket. Um, it's actually a Draper brand, but I bought it from uh, Asda. Uh, Two pound fifty. <laughs> so yeah, not the, not the best quality blade in the world, but it's got a few uses. Especially if you want to uh, have a bottle of wine or file your nails in a survival situation. Yes. Anyway. I've got one anyway. Uh, the Birkin Magnum Hawk liner lock knife, that you've probably already seen. The Birkin Magnum Macro Stubby. Birkin Magnum Giant Bully. And the Ito Jungle King. Don't particularly like this knife, but uh, and it's been replaced by the Giant Bully. So I don't take it out very often. In here is just some sandpaper folded up and wrapped with a single sheet of normal paper just to stop it from uh, causing abrasion when I'm putting it in and out of my pack. Uh, a very cheap folding saw. Didn't come with a sheath so I actually made a sheath out of duct tape um, and finished it off with some camo pattern curtain material. Um, so just a very simple sheath knocked up for that. Um, in fact, and it just fits in like that. 
Now, <clears throat> in the cargo pockets of my trousers, I always keep the same thing. And that is a huge chunk of kitchen roll, basically. My advice, don't bother taking loo roll, toilet roll, toilet tissue, whatever you want to call it. Don't bother taking toilet roll out in the, t in the bush. Take kitchen roll. There's several reasons why. Toilet roll doesn't burn properly, so it's no good as a tinder. It falls apart when it's wet, so it's no good as a... Um, you can make it use it as a temporary filter, I suppose, to if it, filtering water. Um, you, you can actually use kitchen towel uh, carefully enough and let it dry out and use it again. Um, so it's far more useful than loo roll. Um, so I always take a good big hank of... Uh, of kitchen roll with me in each of the two cargo pockets. I think that's invaluable for keeping clean, uh, emergency fire lighting, emergency filter making, um, absolutely anything. Far more uses than toilet paper. Far more. This small cosmetics jar that I've got uh, washing up liquid in I've actually got a few of these jars and I'm in the process of deciding uh, what to bring what to bring out with me in the jars. Um, I've got another one that's full of Vaseline um, uh, for obvious reasons um, but I've actually misplaced it at the moment so I can't show you it. Um, so yeah I've got this and I've also got one full of Vaseline um, as a backup um, and I've got a couple more empty ones that I'm not quite sure what I should put in them. Um, Please feel free to put in the comments box um, anything that you could advise me to uh, to pack out in these containers. Some small, uh, some liquids or gels of some description, perhaps, or some pastes. Um, I'm not sure. Maybe some some food stuffs or um, anyway. I'm still trying to decide what to use these for. Um, so I've only really decided on one of them. Um, being this one, because um, washing up liquid is quite handy, so that's definitely going to come. It kind of goes with the uh, with the washing up ball. And some of the other stuff I've forgotten to mention, of course, a uh, cheap baseball cap, um, one by one meter square section of camouflage curtain material, just cotton polyester material, I suppose. Very really handy for making various things. Uh, insect repellent, basically. Uh, one of those cheap whistles with a backup compass, a thermometer on. Uh, a decent compass, of course. One of those Lensatic marching variety compasses. And I've also got a second plastic uh, tub with cotton balls. Um, once again, the cotton balls don't have Vaseline with them. Um, the reason for this is because uh, I think it's slightly cheating uh, in the sense that using uh, a normal cotton ball is relatively similar to using cotton lichen, uh, which obviously can be found naturally. Um, and it, it kind of acts and performs in a, a very similar manner. Whereas uh, you're not really going to come across um, something similar to a cotton ball with Vaseline. Uh, in the wild, uh, whereas, like I say, just using it without Vaseline uh, kind of simulates the cotton lichen to a certain extent, which is why I don't use the Vaseline, so um, that actually needs topping up. Anyway, a couple of other items there big chunky fleece, and a uh, cheap old sleeping bag. Interested to see how that performs once the uh, once the evenings get a bit cooler, which they are already starting to.